Welcome back to the Adafruit Learning System Raspberry Pi Web IDE video series. In episode 1 we covered how to install and set up the Web IDE on your Raspberry Pi. In episode 2 we covered all the basic features of the Web IDE. In episode 3 we went over how to take advantage of the Web IDE Visualizer feature. In this video, episode 4, we will run through how to use the very handy debugger feature. You can find all of the following code examples and wiring diagrams on the Adafruit Learning System. Go to learn.adafruit.com and in the search bar type in Debugging with the Raspberry Pi to find the correct guide. Then click on the Debug a Blinking LED page. If you haven't used a debugger, either on the command line or in an integrated development environment, Hopefully this video will help you understand why you'd want to do so, and how to effectively debug your code. Let's get started by wiring up your Raspberry Pi with the Adafruit Pi Cobbler using the following wiring diagram. You can use a resistor of any size between 330 ohms to 1000 ohms. Make sure the shorter leg of the LED goes to ground. Before we go back into the WebIDE, let's copy the first bit of code from this project. Click the copy code link in the upper right hand corner of the code box. Now, let's go back into the Web IDE and set up a project for this guide. First, let's create a new project folder named Debugging within the MyPy Projects folder. Next, let's create a new file in the Debugging Project folder and name it Blink.py. Then, paste in the code we copied earlier and click Save. The code is pretty straightforward. We want to turn off the LED, then turn it back on with a 2 second break in between, and the print statements should match what the LED is doing. We first import the required libraries. We're using GPIO pins, so we'll need GPIO and the Python sleep library to slow things down a bit at times. Next is setting up the GPIO for the LED. Starting on line 10 is our enable LED method that either turns the LED on or off based on the value of should enable. After that, starting at line 16, is just turning the LED on or off with the print statements and sleep to slow things down. As you can see in this live demo, when we click run, the output from our print statements isn't matching what the LED is doing during the sleep statements. Let's fire this up in the debugger and see if we can find out what's going wrong. When the file is open in the web IDE, click the debug link to activate the debugger. With the red debug line active and ready in the upper right of the screen, we're ready to start debugging. This is a rather simple program, so what we'll do is just click step over for each line in our program. As we click step over, the code that has the red line over it will execute and the red line will continue on to the next line, waiting for your next instruction. You can see that when we step over line 16, we expect the LED to turn off, but it turns on. This is where the step in function comes in handy. Instead of simply executing the function, it will step into it and allow you to go step by step through the function to see how it is behaving. Let's step into line 19 and see what is going on in the function. Ah, I see. It looks like we've mixed up some true and false statements in the enable LED function. Let's go ahead and switch those around and then click save restart. Anytime you edit the code while debugging, you need to click Save Restart so that the debugger resets with your changes. We should now be ready to test this out again. We can either step through the program or simply click Run to see how it behaves. This may seem like a pretty basic example, but when your code gets more complex, it can get really tricky trying to find out why an LED isn't turning on, or why you're not able to output the correct value to an LCD. Stepping through your code and viewing the output or variables in real time is a pretty powerful tool that can make your life a whole lot easier when debugging. In the coming weeks, we'll be releasing videos that will continue to cover more of the advanced features, such as the scheduler. So, be sure to subscribe to our channel here on YouTube. Thanks for watching.